Are you designing or developing a new product that will be manufactured in China? Unless you have done this professionally for years, it might be a very painful process. Next, we're going to talk about the three deadly mistakes that will hurt your ability to manufacture a new product in China effectively. We can also call it the domino effect of China manufacturing. Making two or three critical mistakes at the start of a new product development project will usually trigger a sequence of other serious problems. And here are the three deadly mistakes. Deadly mistake one, no appropriate strategy and plan. This often leads companies in the hands of the wrong type of supplier. Here are a few examples. For example, working with an ODM manufacturer because they already have relatively similar products with the risk of being their source of ideas for their own new products. Another example is working with a trading company that might not have much control over what happens at the factory. Or working with a large organization that will never put their best resources on your tiny project. Another case, working with a manufacturer that doesn't even have the right engineering competencies. Many companies have come to us after getting frustrated by a bad fit supplier and we noticed that this original error was usually at the source of many other problems. First, excessive confidence in one supplier and lack of a backup supplier, which becomes a huge problem when the current relationship needs to be ended. For anything but a small project, having a backup is important. Even if you don't get 100% production ready, they should be at least halfway there. Second, ignorance of the wide gap between R&D, like a few prototypes of the product made with components from random suppliers, and NPI, which is a certified product, ready tooling, ready production processes, ready testing stations, qualified suppliers, and the ability to transition from product development to mass production smoothly. Since it is ignored, it is overlooked, even though bridging this gap might take six months of hard work. Third, since the buyer has no realistic vision of what it will take to get to a successful, mostly problem-free, mass production run, they make three serious mistakes. Trusting the supplier's rosy projections, which often turn out to be massively over-enthusiastic without requesting a specific plan and challenging it. Yes, sure, it can ship out in four months. Another one is promising a go-to-market at an unrealistic date to eager retailers and all crowdfunding backers and delivering it 6 to 18 months late or promising a certain product to the market and to inventors before the product design is really mature. What if finally you need to change a material to make it manufacturable at scale, or a part of the software to pass the certification? A proper agreement is essential, and yet it is often set aside and forgotten until the buyer starts to have doubts all clear signs of misconduct. Here are a few key benefits it would provide. First, get the supplier to commit at keeping the bill of materials, like the list of all components with their sources and prices open to you. If you request this from the beginning, some manufacturers will accept. Second, Get the supplier to recognize that all intellectual property developed is yours. Yes, it should be normal, but in China, it is not. Third, have leverage in case the supplier misbehaves. This will apply if you make the agreement enforceable in the country of the supplier. 
The most important is to do this at the very start. Once you have started working with the Chinese supplier, you have invested some time and they have made some progress. They know you won't switch away from them. Good luck to get them to sign your agreement at that stage. It is often too late. What happens in this case? It doesn't always happen, but the supplier might raise prices. Or they might deliver poor quality. Or they will take your tooling and product hostage when you start to threaten them with penalties. Next, deadly mistake three. That's excessive reliance on the chosen supplier. Since you tend to fall in love with a manufacturer and entrust your entire projects to them, you fail to take any precautions. This is in addition to the absence of a proper agreement, and it compounds the effects I mentioned above. The most common symptoms of these mistakes are as follows. First, the buyer has no knowledge of the critical component suppliers or the factories doing critical surface treatment such as plating, painting, and so on. This makes switching to a new supplier even harder as everything has to be started over from scratch. Second, no or micromanagement of the engineering work. The buyer doesn't have the drawings, the schematics, and other non-recurring engineering deliverables. Again, moving away from the current supplier means starting over from scratch. This is at the heart of what our company does, and many importers come to us for that kind of work. Unfortunately, when they realize how little information they have in their hands and how bad their alternatives look, they sometimes decide that their only viable solution is trying to solve their current supplier relationship. This decision drives them to get even deeper into their hole. Sometimes they find a way to get some products to market and get some oxygen. Often, though, they are digging their own project's grave. When they have run out of funds and there is no clear path ahead, it is often wiser to admit defeat. Okay, that's all we have for today. We're going to talk about the possible solutions for you in our next video. Thank you for watching and see you in our next one.